Black Star Podcast. Welcome to the channel. This is your boy Jared, and today we're going to be talking about Chinese company GAC. They've just revealed their prototype flying car for the first time. And the basic the basis of this conversation that we're going to be having today is because America has dropped the ball on a lot of things, including manufacturing and innovation. See, America is good for innovating with technology as far as like weapon weapons technology and military weaponry. But we don't particularly invest in exporting goods rather than importing goods. So that in turn gave a lot of leeway to other countries to innovate and expand their technology that they produce in their own countries and they export it which made them become wealthy countries whereas the US we import a lot of their goods and we also export only weaponry really so what I'm going to do is I'm going to share my screen here, and I'm going to go to the actual article itself. As you can see on first view, this electric ve this uh, this flying vehicle is a is in a capsule design. So the cockpit slash um driving oh yeah the cockpit I say. The cockpit is a pod design with six electrical with six electrical motors attached to it, and it's on a platform that looks very goofy as hell. Now, I'm not criticizing this flat this prototype, and because it's a prototype, it's a development prototype. So basically, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to be reading this, and I'm going to be showing you how basically the U.S innovation versus Chinese or competition countries innovation so here we go um Chinese uh, Chinese Island Waker GAC group on Monday showcased an electric unmanned flying card prototype a product it says can both move on the ground and through the air and a futuristic plan to take is urban mobility to the uh, to another dimension. Weird words, but okay. Let's see. Why it matters. The debut makes the makes GAC the latest Chinese comp, uh, Chinese automaker to promise riders flying taxis a still immature technology after the technology after the Toyota manufacturing partner began recruiting a number of aircraft developed by uh, research and development engineering roles a year ago. The um, the prototype dubbed Colt Gold is built on a mod on a modular system in which the fly the flight and automotive components can be separated. Many passengers can could drive away the composite once it lands. And it's interesting. GAC uh, GAC envisions a future where passengers can easily access multi-dimensional. Why are they saying dimensional? Because it's not a dimension. Um, okay, quote unquote multi-dimensional mobility services ranging from electric air taxis to ride ha ride hailing platforms, according to Eugene. Eugene, president of GAC Research Institute, who spoke at the company's annual Tech Day event in Giyuza. I really want to go to I'm really want to go to China and Japan. The automo uh, the automaker did not reveal any production uh, many production details about the flying car, but Wu uh, Wu uh, with only Wu. Only mentioned that passengers within the greater Greater Bay Area, where GAC is headquartered, would prefer a 
for a driver range of at least 200 kil uh, kilometers, which means 100 and 124 miles. The Chinese media outlet Kyongjin reported. Okay. Um, context. Several auto, uh, several Chinese automakers have been working on electric veto, uh, electric vertical takeoff and landing, e veto taxis, but none have ever, never have yet received approval for commercial use from local regulators. Um, Aerofungi, I'm not even gonna attempt to say that. An affiliate of Volvo's parent, Glenn Glennie says it has filed an application for operations of its prototype test aircraft with the Southern or Southwestern Bureau of Silver, Age, Silver Aviation Administration of China last year. Um, Aero Fungi, Aero Fagu, I'm not, I'm sorry if I'm fucking up that name. E2, uh, AE200 E vetoes have reached a the airworthiness review stage. The Chinese media outlet. I'm not gonna say their names because I do not want to fuck up their names. Um, another another startup backed by the Chinese electrical automaker Young. I'm not gonna say their name again. Motors says. Or well, said in January that it would be granted a regulatory issued certification to test uh, test the pilot test is X2 two person flying vehicle which has a battery life of 25 minutes. The uh, the company plans to sell to start selling the next generation of fl its flying car at the price tag of. 135 138,596 dollars in US and 1 million uh RM RMB uh as early as 2025 so what does this entail this entail tells me that the US government has or not the US government, but the Chinese government has innovated its country enough to where it's gonna start producing the next generation of flying cars. Now what does this entail for the US? This means that the Chinese the Chinese um innovation has had a jump start due to the fact that I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna just put it out here. The reason why a lot of these companies overseas are becoming so advanced is because they prioritize their citizens over their military. Not over their military, but they prioritize their citizens with, job, with jobs and innovation. Whereas the U.S. doesn't promote innovation for the country, it only promotes weaponry, I should say, and also a lot of this, I want to say, woke media. And bullshit like that. So you see more of these companies overseas developing new technologies. Now I'm not going to say that the U.S. doesn't have any companies that are developing new technologies, but we can. I can say this. Whereas in other countries, they have a sense of developing a new country. Or a new company and developing new technology, their market is becoming more advanced. Look at Japan. Japan has robots now. I'm talking about humanoid robots. Robots that can literally walk like us, have the movement and motion of us. Now, here, we don't see any of that. And unless you're at a prototype expo ladies and gentlemen this technology nowadays is becoming real see 
automotive innovation and innovation of the different technologies, especially in alternative fuels, which I'm going to be doing live on tomorrow. A lot of innovation that we have nowadays is going to cause changes in the global economy and the global world. See, I've said it and I'll say it again. Different countries are investing in their people while the U.S. government is investing in pointless shit like gender fluidity and um, gender studies and all that shit. The U.S. sent millions of jobs overseas to help the Chinese government become to help the Chinese government with jobs. Sent companies, allowed companies to go overseas and, and produce more products at a cheaper cost instead of paying the American people what they are worth. Now, let's talk about this. With that being said, we are seeing a lot of companies pull out of the U.S. due to the laws that are being made, especially in California, Silicon Valley, I should say, Texas even, in some aspects. Different companies are moving out of the U.S. for cheaper costs. Now I'm going to say this. That could potentially open up markets to people. Just hear me out, just hear me out. If you're innovating and becoming a new power in an innovative and a direct and a disruptive technology, what that could mean is that could be a new industry for you and also that could be a new industry that you could start and start producing jobs with people in the US. But that's just my little two cents on it. I'm just here to report the news, but I'm pretty sure all of you are gonna say cool. But anyways guys, like share and subscribe to the channel, support the podcast on Spider.com. I'll see you guys on the flip side thing.